If you slow down to appreciate the natural world, she will reveal herself to you. Today we take a closer look at the smallest of details as we dive under the surface of Morovo Lagoon. These delicate life forms have perfectly evolved to their ecosystems, and sadly, we as humans are rapidly changing these ecosystems. It is easy to forget about the abundance of life, intelligence, and beauty that lives entirely hidden from the human eye. And so it is understandably difficult to comprehend just how our actions are affecting them. Somewhere along the way, we have forgotten that this planet is not infinite in her resources and that she does not belong to us alone. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet, both above and below the surface, and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. Crew. Yeah, back to six again, which is always kind of relaxing in a way, honestly. Yeah, we've only had six three times. That's always been for like a week or less, but all three times I feel like I've connected with the remaining crew just a little bit more, you know? It just kind of like brings you to your basics. So, yeah. We're going to pretty much round this island, which is Bangunu Island. We're going to round the whole thing and come up on the south side of it. There's a really cool up, uh, upright wreck that I want to dive. And then, uh, once we're on the south side, uh, our wood carvings will likely be done, and I will race over here with the dive dinghy to meet up with Ocean again. So that's the, the plan. We hope we go, we hope it goes as planned. In the living room, in the sitting room, I will wait for you. In the hollow I hear you Like a darkened glass For the devil's past And he is waiting fast To set his own trap too Solomon Islands right now in what's considered to be the off season and there's almost no wind at all and we've just been doing like these little short kind of day motors to copy from island to island, 10, 20 miles here, 10, 20 miles there and today we finally have perfect wind and we're flying along at eight knots and we're going through the most beautiful lagoon. There's little specks of islands all around us uh, with like bright turquoise reefs and blue skies so it's a pretty sweet day and I think everyone's feeling very happy about our current situation in life. Look at this. All three sails out. In the needle, huh? Yeah, went right through a little gap in the reef right here with 24 feet on our left, 16 feet on our right. But it looks to be a pretty good, good gap, a couple hundred feet. And now we're turning north a little bit because dead ahead is kind of like uncharted. So I'm just trying to. I honestly like without this kind of stuff, like without real time, it'd be so hard to navigate this stuff. So luckily, we live in the future. And, uh, Flying along at eight knots. Yeah. We don't hit anything. <laughs> yeah, but we did a little bit of wind production earlier with uh, thick wind, and they said that we were going to have a good sail day here in the lagoon. Quite excited. <laughs> We 
have uh, these locals, we stopped them to ask them if it was safe to pass the to island there and they said that it is like, it's way better now for the wind and uh, right, right now it's way more protected. So they offered to guide us and take us to the best spot. And yeah, that's actually the way super helpful because it starts in this area not really well. So we don't know exactly where the reefs are and we always have to have somebody like there, Emily. Did yeah. you did you successfully sleep outside? I didn't. No, no, <laughs> no. Rain. I understand the feeling where you're just in denial. Yeah. It's, it's not gonna rain, just but it's gonna so rain. good outside. Today's gonna be the second round to put the here the last piece of uh, epoxy with a uh, fiberglass. We forgot here, it's a little bit uh, of the crack here. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's gonna be a uh, small piece here and inside there are two cracks mm -hmm. that centers with the rain and whatever goes the water inside so i'm gonna cover that and it's in a, it's finished i hope tomorrow morning we can put it down in the water she's got character now huh yeah, yeah. but it's very well yeah, yeah. <laughs> good old mac she's a workhorse yeah uh, looking good though we are in a beautiful spot um Yesterday I was blowing 30 knots. We wanted to go to some outlying islands for some scuba diving, but 30 knots out there. So we came and found some shelter and we are on the north end of Morava Lagoon now and everybody here is so friendly. And something I kind of want to point out is, oddly enough, we are in the Solomons um, as they are getting the internet. So if you don't know, um, I'm sure you don't. Solomons is actually the last major country where the the whole country doesn't have like a um, an, an actual pipeline going to it for internet for fast internet. I'm not a technical guy, so I don't really know what that means. But um, they have just completed this submarine pipe to make the internet much faster, and uh, they're testing it now. And so next month they're supposed to have fast internet, which. For better or for worse, it's gonna forever change the Solomons. You know, you kind of have in your mind and you want them to to kind of always stay the same and this to be like the last, you know, cool place where everybody's just in their canoes and it has that simple life. But on the flip side, you know, people are struggling. The, their, um, their wage comes to about a dollar an hour US. That's their, their minimum wage and just so you know, that minimum wage was doubled last year from 50 cents US to a dollar US. So it's really hard for people to, to kind of break out of their situation and, and do what they want to do. Um, now for hundreds and thousands of years, they've just had their little tribal community and, and they've been able to get by just fine. But without a doubt with the internet coming, you know, they're gonna be even more exposed to the world as a whole. And so I think it will very much change the Solomons. It also will make them more connected. Um, I keep hearing the same word, uh, eco-retreat, eco-lodge. And so this gentleman wants to put in some moorings and build himself like a little bit of an eco-retreat. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. So they're smart, hardworking people and um, you can kind of look at them as like they can go many different directions and if they really focus on ecotourism, I think that that will be um, a, really, a really cool thing for Solomon to do and to, to keep this environment what it is and protect it. And you know, by focusing on ecotourism, that very much might, might help that. So with that said, um, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see. We will actually be here when the internet gets turned on. So, interested to see uh, how this changes Solomon's if we come back here in, you know, five or ten years. Right now I'm actually talking to Delos a lot because they came through here before they really made videos back in their blogging days. 
and they've been a huge help of like telling us like stuff they did and I've read some of their blogs and I send them some photos and of like they knew John Ruka for instance our crew and uh, it's just interesting to see even from then what they feel has probably changed um, one thing that I think is hugely changed is Solomon's kind of got a really bad rap for a while with um, people boarding boats um, which they do out of poverty you know again they don't have much we've been fine and every boat that I've talked to has, has been fine so I want to kind of break that stigma that they have that uh, they really are tiring and, and people like John Ruka know of the old problems and know of the stigma that they've had and uh, they're trying to break that so there you go long talk going back to Candy Coron so I can uh, actually dive in and also to take as much as footage as we can because yesterday was so many things that they couldn't film everything. My second opportunity to dive, let's see if everything goes okay with the gear and I can go deep down. But not that. No, that <laughs> Your first dozen dives or so, you may be simply wanting to see a sea turtle or a manta ray or something simply magnificent. But eventually, you start taking the appreciation in the smaller things and taking notice of the personalities of fish and the symbiotic relationships between creatures in the underwater world. Let me introduce you to a curious mutualistic relationship between shrimp gobies and alphage shrimps. They live together in the same burrow. The shrimp has poor eyesight and it builds and maintains the burrow while the keen-eyed goby serves as a sentry at the burrow entrance. The shrimp spends much of the daylight hours bulldozing sand or rubble from the burrow entrance. It rests one of its antenna on the goby. If the goby detects danger, it alerts the shrimp and they both hide inside the burrow until the goby peeks out and makes sure that the coast is clear. It's these interactions underwater that make my inquisitive mind wonder. How does this odd pair find each other? How do the first goby-shrimp friendship start? Peculiar roommates, don't you think?
Next time on Expedition Drenched, Ocean journeys on land to Morova Lagoon to experience their famous wood carving, and we designed some exciting wood carving projects for Sylvia. That's like island life, really, and I'm I'm right on it. Hi, hi. <laughs> I saw it too. I have eyes too. My eyes said it was deep. Well, okay, we're going scuba diving. <laughs> Maybe a bit more excitement. No, it wasn't deep. <laughs> Nate has a, a meter on his eyes. He can measure everything. Maybe they need to still have at the time that this video came out. <laughs> what do you think it is, baby? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't. It's the athlete's part. <laughs> I mean, you're an athlete. So. I'm an athlete. <laughs> and, that, and that's my foot. So, now you have it. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good explanation. Case closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. Get your oars out, ladies. <laughs>